Hello everybody. It is time for us to take a look at the lesson 2-4 worksheet. The first couple of problems on this worksheet are about making equations. This is something that you did in algebra class, but it might be something that was kind of difficult or something that's hard to remember. And these are pretty tricky problems just in how we have to approach them. The rest of the worksheet is basically about parallel and perpendicular lines. So number 13 says, what are the equations of lines M and Q? So if we look at line M here, in order to make the equation of a line, we need to know a point on the line and the slope of the line. We only know a point on this line though. We don't know its slope, but we do know that M is perpendicular to N. And we can find the slope of n because we have two points on n that we can put into the slope formula. So if we find the slope of n and then take the opposite reciprocal of that slope, that will give us the slope of line m. So that's what we're going to do. We'll take the points on m. I'm going to write them up here because otherwise I'll forget them. 1, negative 1, and 4, 4. Put them into the slope formula. 4 minus negative 1 over 4 minus 1 gives us 5 thirds. So if the slope of line n is 5 thirds, the slope of line m will be the opposite reciprocal. So the slope of m will be negative 3 fifths or negative 0.6 because I like working in decimals when I can. And so then we can find the slope, or sorry, the um, equation of line m. We can do it a couple different ways. I'm going to go ahead and make the y equals mx plus b equation. So y equals negative 0.6x plus b. And I'm going to say, how can I find what the b value is? I know that on line m, 2 comma 6 is one of the points. So if I go ahead and put in a 6 for the y and a 2 for the x, then there's only going to be a b left over. That's what we want. So 6 equals negative 0.6 times 2 plus b. And that's going to give us 6 equals negative 1.2 plus b. Add 1.2 to each side. And we find out that 7, <coughs> sorry, 7.2 equals b. So our equation for part one for the equation of line m is going to be y equals my slope of negative 7, not negative 7, sorry about that, negative 0.6, negative 0.6x plus 7.2. And that's what I've got for the first answer. The next part says I need to find the equation of Q. Well, Q is going to pass through the same point that M passed through, but since it's perpendicular, it's going to have the opposite reciprocal slope. So the opposite reciprocal slope of negative 3 fifths is 5 thirds. So we're going to say the slope of Q of Q is equal to 5 thirds. All right, and since that one doesn't make a nice decimal, I'm actually just going to keep it at 5 thirds. So I'm going to say, all right, I've got my equation, y equals 5 thirds x plus b. But I know an xy coordinate pair that's on that line because I know that on q, 2 6 is a point. So I'm going to write 6 equals 5 thirds times 2 plus b. So 6 equals 10 thirds plus b. Then I'm going to go ahead and subtract 10 thirds from each side. 6 is equal to 18 thirds, right? Because 6 times 3 is 18. So 18 thirds minus 10 thirds is 8 thirds equals b. So this equation for q is going to be y equals my slope of 5 thirds x plus 8 thirds for the y-intercept. And that's it. Yeah. 
<laughs> there we go. All right, next, lines N and K intersect on the Y axis. All right, so they intersect here somewhere. And what is the equation of line K in slope intercept form? Now, I actually don't have this one pre-done, so you're gonna watch me do this in real time and I might not be very good at it. So I apologize if that is the case. All right, so we wanna find the equation of line K. What do we know about line K? It is perpendicular to line J. That's all we really know about it. We also know that it passes the Y axis here, which could be useful because whatever the coordinate is at the Y axis, it's gonna be zero comma that number. So that could help us to find another point on line K. I also see that these two angles, 74 and 106, are supplementary. That tells me that line N and line M are parallel. That's helpful because I have two points on line M. So I can find the slope of line M using the slope formula. Y2 minus Y1, 2 minus negative 1, over x2 minus x1, 5 minus negative 3, that's going to give me 3 over 8. So the slope of m is 3 eighths. So then I say, all right, I know that the slope of m is 3 eighths, which means the slope of n, which is parallel to it, is also 3 eighths. And if I can find the y-intercept, of line n, that's going to give me another point. So I'm going to go ahead and find the equation of line n so that I can find its y-intercept. I know n has a slope of 3 eighths and it's got a point at 4 comma 5. So I'm going to make the equation y equals 3 eighths x plus b. We're trying to find the b value because that's the y-intercept. I'll use 4, 5 in here. So 5 for the y-coordinate equals 3 eighths uh, times 4 plus b. So 5 equals, let me see real quick, that's going to be 1.5. So 1.5 plus b, we'll subtract 1.5 from each side. So 3.5 is our b value. So that's going to tell me that this equation is going to be y equals, whoa, 3 eighths x plus 3.5. That means that the y-intercept of this equation is 3.5. So I can go here then, and I can make a coordinate point at 0 comma 3.5. And since the equation tells me, or not the equation, but the problem tells me that lines k and n intersect on the y-axis, I know that 0 comma 3.5 is a point on line k. Now I have two points on line k. I have negative 2, 6 and 0 comma 3.5. I can use those to find the slope of line k. So I've got my two points. I've got negative 2, 6 and I have 0 comma 3.5. So that means I'm going to do 3.5 minus 6 over 0 minus negative 2, that's going to be negative 2.5. Let me check that real quick because I'm bad at subtraction. We're good. Over positive 2. Since my fraction already has a decimal in it, I'm just going to go ahead and figure out what that is. That's going to be negative 1.25. Okay. So if I make my equation, I'm going to say, all right, I have a slope. I have two points that I could use, but this one is nice because I already know the y-intercept, right? I know the y-intercept, I know the slope. I can just write the equation in slope-intercept form. y equals negative 1.25x plus 3.5. And that will be the equation for this line. 
And after we get this done, we have to find the equation of line J in slope-intercept form. J happens to be perpendicular to line K. So we know that the slope of J is the opposite reciprocal of K. Of course, we wrote K in decimal form, but we can change it into fraction form. Negative 1.25 is the same thing as negative 5 fourths. So we know that the slope of line J will be the opposite reciprocal of that and the slope of it will be equal to positive 4 fifths. We also know that it passes through the line if I had a point, negative 2 comma 6, because that is on line k as well. So it passes through negative 2 comma 6. So let's go ahead and make the equation here. We've got y equals 4 fifths x plus b, and we can put in 6 for y, equals ne uh, positive 4 fifths times 2 plus b and so or sorry times negative 2 so 6 is going to be equal to negative 8 fifths plus b we'll add 8 fifths to both sides so let's see 6 is equal to 30 fifths because 6 times 5 is 30 30 fifths plus 8 fifths is 38 fifths so 38 fifths equals b. So we can make our equation. We can say y equals my slope of 4 fifths x plus 38 fifths. And of course, I tend to go back and forth always uh, between fractions and decimals. You can choose one and stick with it. I don't know why I go back and forth so much. I just kind of prefer to work in decimals when I have easy decimals, but you can go either way. Now, Shannon says that the lines y equals negative 3x minus 4, y equals negative 1 third x plus 6, y equals negative 4x plus 5, and y equals 1 fourth x plus 5 could represent the size of the rectangle. Explain Shannon's error. Well, if we have a rectangle, we know some things about rectangles. We know that rectangles have two pairs of sides that are parallel to one another. And if we look at the slopes of all these lines, all the slopes are different. So there are no sides that are parallel, which means there are no parallel lines, which means this cannot possibly be a rectangle. So we can write that. A rectangle has two pairs of sides that are parallel. None of these lines have the same slope of these lines have the same slope. So no sides are parallel, which of course means it cannot be a rectangle. Number 19, consider the slopes of the lines y equals f of x and y equals g of x to determine if, e if each pair of lines is parallel. Now this table, right, it shows the x values, the f of x values, and the g of x values. So it's kind of like two tables in one. It's like here are the x's and here are the y's for the f of x function. And here are the x's and here are the y's for the g of x function. So if I want to determine if the pair of lines is parallel, I need to find two points on f of x. Maybe I'll use 0, 5 and 1, 7. And I also need to use two points on g of x, right? And again, this is the x, this is the y. So for g of x, I have a point at 0, 10 and I have a point at 1, 15. So I'm going to go ahead and find the slope of each pair of lines, right? Or of each line using the slope formula. So 7 minus 5 over 1 minus 0. That's going to give us 2 over 1 or a slope of 2. And then down here, we've got 15 minus 10 over 1 minus 0, which is 5 over 1 
which is five. And of course, they don't have the same slope, so they are not parallel. They are not parallel. All right. Determine if each pair of lines is perpendicular. All right, well, <clears throat> oh, whoops. Our lines got down on the second page. That's all right, we'll go like this. So for 23, we're looking at D and E. So if I'm looking at D, I can find some points here on D to calculate the slope. If it's a graph, it's really easy to just do rise over run up two over one means there's a slope of two for D. E, we can find two points on E as well. Um, doo -doo -doo. There's one, there's one. That one is down one over two. So that's gonna be negative one half. And since they have opposite reciprocal slopes, they are perpendicular. G and H, we say, all right, here's G. We find two points on line G. There's one, and there is one. So then over three and down five. So rise over run, that's a slope of negative five thirds. And H, we look at H here. We can find points on H. There's one, there's one. So over three up two, two over three, that's a slope of two thirds. So one of them has a slope of negative five thirds, the other one has a slope of two thirds, so no, they are not perpendicular. And then R and S, R has a slope of undefined because it's straight up and down. And S has a slope of zero because it's straight across, so they are perpendicular. All right. Number 28, the table shows locations of several sites at a high school campus. A landscaper wants to connect two sites with a path perpendicular to the path connecting the cafeteria and the library. Which of the two sites could he connect? Well, first of all, we've got to find the path between the cafeteria and the library. What's the slope of that? So we'll use those two points, 14 minus five, y2 minus y1 over 11 minus five, x2 minus x1. So that's gonna be nine over two, or sorry, nine over six. I can do math, I promise. All right, which is, um, simplifies to three over two. There we go. So that means that we want to find a slope perpendicular to that slope. So we want to find a slope of two, sorry, of negative two thirds, the opposite reciprocal slope. So we have to go through all of these um, different points, calculate the slopes between them, until we find a slope between them of negative two thirds. And I don't feel like writing all of these combinations. So I will tell you that the slope of negative two thirds is between the gym and the art studio. And I'm sure that you can figure out how to find all of those slopes if you need to. Number 29 are the steepest parts of the two water slides parallel. Well, the steepest part is marked here. We've got a rise of 72 over a run of 40. So that slope is 72 over 40. And we can simplify that to 1.8. The other one has a slope of 40 over 24. And that simplifies or divides to 1.6. And those aren't the same number. So no, their slopes are not the same. So they're not parallel. No, since their slopes are not 
the same. All right, almost done. Line AB is perpendicular to line BC for A is negative 3, 2, and C is negative or is positive 2, 7. Which of the following could be the coordinates of B? Select all that apply. So what we need to find is which of these points, if we use them as B, is going to make my slopes, A, B, and B, C, opposite reciprocals, right? So I might call my point that I don't know yet, the X of point B and the Y of point B. So I need two things to happen. I need to find the slope of point A with my theoretical point B, right? I would have to kind of guess and check with these, right here, 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 here. You can't see that, sorry. Here, 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 here. I would need to try all of these. But what I need to do is do y2 minus y1, so yb minus the y value of two in point A over y or x2 minus x1, so the x value of b minus negative three in point A. And then I also need to try this point and find the slope between this point and point C. So I would need to try uh, seven minus yb over two minus xb. And what I need is for these two slopes I find to be opposite reciprocals. Need these two slopes to be opposite reciprocals. Okay, and when I find them, when I check all these numbers and I find slopes that are opposite reciprocals, I know that those could be the coordinates of point B, right? So I'm going to show you which ones they are, but this is work that you should be able to do. It's just kind of plugging in, right? So if I plugged in negative four, five for X, B, and Y, B, and for X, B, and Y, B over here, that would give me opposite reciprocal slopes. If I plugged in negative three, seven for X, B, and Y, B on the left and X, B, and Y, B on the right, then that would give me opposite reciprocal slopes. So those are the answers. Number 32, line K passes through two negative three and eight one, which equation represents a line that is parallel to K? Well, we need to find the slope of this line. So we'll write one minus negative three over uh, two, nope, sorry, eight minus two. We always have to make sure that the first two numbers come from the same coordinate point and the second two numbers come from the same coordinate point. So 1 minus negative 3 is 4, 8 minus 2 is 6, 4 is 6 simplifies to 2 thirds. So I need to find a slope that is parallel to 2 thirds, which of course means I need to find the equation with the slope of 2 thirds, which is b. All right. Thanks so much for listening. If you have any questions, please let me know and have a wonderful day.